every trade has its own language of special terms and jargon. The public relations arena is no different, but when merged with the brave new world of cryptocurrencies, the blockchain and the e-commerce, there is an increased possibility of creating ideas which are not always understood by newcomers. From time to time in these postings, I'm therefore going to take a frequently used term and make it clear to readers. Of course, many of you will already be up to speed with such jargon, but it never does any harm to repeat the basics. And to a relative newbie, the explanation may be very useful. So today's subject is that of bounty campaigns, you will no doubt have heard of them, but are they as chocolatey and coconutty as they sound? Sadly not, but they do form an important part of the strategy for some initial coin offerings. The term is borrowed from the online gaming industry, originally populated by developer programmers skilled at the debugging systems. On launching a beta version of a game, the community would be encouraged to look for snags in the system so that it could be improved. As a reward for such work, various bounties were offered, a bit like the old-time bounty hunters of the American Wild West or the pirates of the Spanish Main. Things have moved on since then, of course, and become far more respectable. Now the process can be more finely controlled, especially with the advent of crypto tokens and currencies. So in a contemporary bounty campaign, an individual is encouraged to do a series of small ta tasks for the ICO, such as debugging or altering their network to the upcoming ICO and then receives tokens in return for their service. It's a simple enough concept, but the downside of this and something all investors should look for when reviewing the white paper of any ICO is that it is not always clear where the funding of the bounty campaign comes from. If the campaign is not clearly budgeted for in the strategy document, then in effect the ICO is printing money and that's something any investor should be aware of. The other aspect to pay close attention to is the levels of control an ICO will exercise over its bounty campaign. As most of these subcontractors are individuals rather than companies, it can be sometimes difficult to hold onto the reins of their activities. In the worst case, an ICO could be opening itself by maverick activities beyond its control by outside contractors. Of course, this is the worst case and in practice bounties campaigns have become widely and successfully used with ICOs giving rewards for tasks such as marketing, bug reporting or improvement of the cryptocurrency framework. A similar state of affairs applies with social media promotion where potentially important influencers may be contracted within a bounty campaign structured to promote likes, shares, views, retweets, comments and so on. Such people will generally be successful and popular bloggers with influential sites. So bounty campaigns can certainly add muscles to the success of an ICO, but always as an investor check in the fine print that any bounty campaign is fully budgeted and accounted for.